Alors, uh, I'll try to make it both in English and with this terrible things. So <coughs> I'm very happy to be here. I'm very sorry for my poor English. I'm not an uh, English speaker. I'm French speaker. And uh, how? I think the, mm, the origin of Ender Yupen seen from uh, prehistoric archaeology is very easy. I stress, very easy, very clear, no doubt. It's coming from uh, modern humans, coming in, into uh, Europe around 40 or 45,000 and it's going on. So we are Asiatic in a world. We're not African by no means. This is happening around uh, 40, 45,000 years old. And I take a picture of Sungil, it's a poorly known uh, civilization in Eastern Europe, but it's the earliest one. Wonderful burials, wonderful technology, wonderful mythologies. This is European. Well, 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 well. Uh oh. Can I have? Where is the bottle, the right bottle? You can, you can use this one. Yes, but to, to switch not on. Aha, sabotage. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, if you use this button. Yeah. Yes. You know, there always been a, a, a war between the Netherlands and the Belgians, and this is a result. <laughs> <laughs> so we are in a huge steps in during the Pleistocene, the upper Pleistocene, as we say. Very dry, very cold, but sunny. It's very favorable for the hunting and for the game. And you see, uh, you have in, drew, in, in yellow what is <coughs> nowadays seas, but it was at that time steppic areas. So we have a wide highway from Asia to Europe. The same continent. You see, you have no northern sea, you have no channel, you have not the Caspian Sea, you have no Adriatic Sea. All that was just one land. And the people were moving. They were moving like the horses, like the bovets, like the mammoth. They didn't need wheel, they don't need chariot. They were just moving very fast, like the Indians nowadays, on the same environment. And why in high latitudes? I stress this high latitude, because in high latitudes we always have sun as the sun is going the same way from east to west, this high latitude means that we have a, a wonderful landscape like this. No clouds. Mm -mm. Well, I'll try again. Yeah. And I want to stress this point for the people who would not be archaeologists yet that we have the white dispersal. You see the raw material here. It's much longer than the whole raw material during the middle plateau. There is a break between the two. They are very local, 100 kilometers around, or many more hundreds of kilometers when you are in apophatic periods. So it proves by just in that example that people were moving and transporting their raw material as well. But shh. And I have to stress this uh, pendants that we have all across Eurasia at that time. For instance, the animals remains like teeth um, are exported more than a uh, uh, few hundreds, but to 1,000 kilometers far. And this is important because all these modern humans in Europe, coming in Europe, are wearing beds, are wearing pendants, um, showing difference between men and animals. They want to show themselves as being in the upper class by the animal symbols. See what I mean? So it's completely new world, exactly like today in our mind. At that time also, we have new um, weapons like the spears, straw, up, and the arrow now. And you have a grow um, in the demographic 
curve right there from Neanderthal to Upstar and all the people we have a growing demographic situation. This is Europe. This is the only Indo-European population. Stress, put it in your mind and don't forget. This is the only time where Europe has been invaded. No Neolithic, no Kurgan, nothing. Only Upper Paetic period is a change in both in demography, in civilization, and in genes. All the rest are marginal effects. So if we compare the dwelling, very easy. This is archaeology, first class. You see, on the left, you have the population, the um, dwelling places of uh, Middle Paetic, and on the right, you have the d same area, dwelling places in Upper Paetic. They are just very easy to count so many, twen about 20 more um, dwelling places during upper poetic than middle poetic. See? This is very crude, very easy to count down. There are much more people during upper poetic. They are invaders. And you have to, con to take into account that this is about 300,000 years. 300,000 years. This is about 30,000 years. So you have to multiply if you want. You're able to. And uh, this is also to give you a, a hint of the relationship between the landscape that is had been reconstructed by um, uh, about um, uh, upper Baltic landscape in Europe at that time, step, okay, cold step, and the game that was there horses, puppets, reindeer, and this art, as we know, the figurative arts coming with upper poetic, where there is uh, already a very interesting sy um, synthesis between the lion and the man. The picture of a man, the picture of a lion. So it's a great new picture, completely taken from the mythology, taken from the new situation that the humanity gives to himself in this natural world. He has the power on the animals. This is apathetic. This is us. This is European. And is this power is given by the symbol of images. Nowhere, nothing before, and it's going on today. And you have this also very uh, important calendars, lunar, lunar calendars, since, since very early apathetic to the left, and late apathetic to the right, and now they are still use in use in Mongoloid uh, migration. So we have them er everywhere in Europe at that time because they were migrating, but they were migrating not based on the sun movement because when they are nomadic people, they don't care about sun movement because the sun is rising any anywhere when you're moving yourself. So it's always a lunar katanda. The moon is much more important than the, the sun for the people moving. Is it clear what I say? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And also, as I said, the <coughs> there is a complete difference between um, the the Neanderthal world. I think they were very clever, by the way, Neanderthal. No doubt, they are smart. But they don't behave the same way as the upper poetic modern human. And one of these um, differences is linked to the raw material. The raw material now is given by the animal itself. You see, here the reindeer antlers or the ivory uh, taken from task, mammoth tusk. You all have all this. And these natural weapons, like the antlers, are returned back to the animal itself by the weapons. This is very new. It, it has never happened before. All the weapons were either on wood or on, uh, uh, on lyrics, but it changed. So the relationship, exactly like the image, um, are together with the animals and man, exactly the weapon and then the economy is based on different relationship between men and animals. This is us. 
This is a, a very interesting image. Maybe you know the Shove cave to the uh, very left, or uh, Columbia in the very right. You have exactly the same iconography, the same style, and the same dates. This is origination, about 35,000 years old, on both situations. Very west, very east. This is one unity. This is origination. And this is also what we have with the modern man, is creating images, creating pictures from some part of the wide world, some part only. It doesn't represent everything, but he chooses some part of the symbolic word which is used for himself as a writing. Uh, I, I'll show you. Here, we are riding um, horses, either wide or on the um, saddle. And these are movements, very quick, very fast, and very often. There is no need for wheel, no need for chariots. They are moving very fast. This is their own land going back and forth all across Eurasia. This is Indo Europeans. Everything we have after, like Neolithic, blah, 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 Dark Organ, blah, blah, this is only marginal or inside. Okay? I can explain if we have time. All this Iberian movement or uh, the Basque or the fi Finnish, all this is inside apopoietic, okay? The base is apopoietic. For instance, you, if you check the DNA, why not? You have the uh, OAC in Romania, which is Neanderthal, and you see immediately the difference with the below there, which is modern human. Whatever the DNA in the past can mean you have immediately very obvious, a complete different population. I don't speak about species, of course. They are the same species, no doubt. But they are different population. Not only the culture, not only the weapons, or the, the art, but even the DNA are different. No doubt, this is European. Don't look everywhere. And this is our, our own excavation. We are, uh, have been excavating in Zagros, like in uh, Iran, but also in central, more central Asia. You have the dispersal of modern men, the upper, the upper map, and the lower map, during the new expansion of this early modern man. I stress, in other words, in simple words, Cro-Magnon, or origination. Okay? That's what we have in everywhere in Europe, and also what we have in the southern central Asia like Zagros, like northern India, by chance, and also uh, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, is exactly the same. Not in Turkey. Not in Turkey. And this is a new um, paleogenetic, probably you know this paper from Fu. We have all this same continuity of our all across Europe during Upper Paetic the same population, and including to the very right of your slide, the Asiatic part of this Eurasia. And you see on the back the dates, but on the whole you have the same uh, people. In other words, we can speak about ar as archaeologists, about the Ignatian, Gravestian, Magdalenian, blah, blah, blah. All these civilizations are the same population. But uh, we can see here there is a break there with the other side. It is a uh, apathy. It is uh, the weakened. Well, it's not so important in the dogmatic term in the middle. And then there is a break. And this break. Uh oh. What? Yeah, up. Yeah, break. This is uh, Africa. Uh, this is what we call Solutrean. But the population came back, as you see, by the, by the side. Uh, to the late apophatic, what we call Magdalene. And then it goes on to nowadays populations. Because there is uh, one uh, influence from Africa to the very west of the continent. But nothing, nothing, stress, take note, nothing is coming from Africa about modern uh, human in Europe. Nothing is coming from Africa, trust me. And this is a new. Uh, DNA, is it mitochondria or epsilon DNA? You see, 
uh, on the nowadays population and there on the scale we have the time depth of this uh, movement of population. Everything is acts just by chance on the southwest Asia coming to Europe, nothing by Africa, by, by the way, and exactly the same as you, as a philologist, you can define as being the Indo-European. Exactly the same tracks we have in DNA and in archaeology, the same acts, southwest, northeast. That's what we are, if you really want to be serious, first, forget the African influence. Second, don't speak about Kurgan and Neolithic invasion. This is stupid, it's out of date, no exist, no way. This is the only data we can have, either on archaeology, on history of art, and on DNA now. This is European and Indo-European. It's not older than 40,000, but f after 40,000, it's going on and on, on, on. And you have to consider that our, now, our the civilization is Mesolithic, in quotes, where the Mesolithic people of Europe are going everywhere. And we have touched upon Neolithic by acculturation here and there. But we are still a Mesolithic people. I mean, in Netherlands, I don't know. And this is what we have, and we are so sensitive to this Chauve art because we are exactly the same. We still are. If you happen to go to Australia, you will see as old or even older pictures as this, but will, you will not feel them because they are not your own. These are your own. Thank you for listening. I'm ready for a question, but no criticism, please. <laughs>